this series of videos I'm attempting to repair this Toshiba Toscal BC1411 Nixie Tube Calculator. In the video so far in this series I've dismantled the unit, gone through the power supply, gone through the back plane and I found some dodgy looking connections on the back plane but I don't think that's what was causing the problems but I've cleaned them up anyway. Uh, power supply is working fine in the previous video I put all the cards back in I had one card in some risers and that was the clock and phase generator uh, card and I'm at the point that my normal approach is to try and figure out uh, what all the different parts of the system do uh, kind of already know from previous experience what the uh, required blocks are for a machine like this to work and it's really just identifying what each one was and where it resides in this particular layout. I don't have any technical documentation for this machine at all I don't even have a user manual for it so I'm kind of flying blind here. There are a lot of components in this it's a discrete transistor based design so there are probably a thousand transistors thousands of diodes it's a DTL system so uh, looked at the various boards, tried to figure out what each board was doing and I just made some notes as to what I was finding. So board 1's the display driver, boards 2 through 5 are the uh, essentially the um, state machine for, or well, the state machine control for the overall machine and the uh, board 6 I believe is the register and ALU or what amounts to the ALU so that's where um, the data is kind of processed by the state machine. Uh, this, this, this is the assumptions I'm making based on the circuits uh, I'm finding and what I'm expecting to find in this machine. Um, board 7 is the board we looked at in the previous video which has the clock phase generator and the control matrix for uh, steering the various control signals around the entire machine and board 8 is the DRAM. So what I decided to do uh, and as, as I said in the previous video the reason I go uh, through this approach is to try and figure out where to start looking for a fault. Uh, in this particular uh, case the addition works but no other functions work properly. Uh, multiplication doesn't work, division doesn't work, subtraction doesn't work uh, the memory seems to work, at least you can put uh, values in and retrieve values, uh, but also when I try to put uh, more than um, the third digit from the end, uh, I can't enter any data into the last three digits on the display. So there's something weird going on, so I decided to focus on bit 12 um, simply because that's the first bit that doesn't seem to be working so rather than look at every single thing I went through uh, looking at the various circuits and focusing on uh, bit 12. Now luckily on most of the boards the various um, probably can't see them but there are some numbers in the copper and it's saying what the bit numbers are for each of the blocks. Now this is as I say the register and what I believe is the what amounts to an ALU, so it allows the data to be extracted from uh, a register and you can uh, essentially add it or subtract it from the value that's already there. So this seems to be the place to start because when I press the key the machine always responds to the key presses irrespective of which key I press. So it seems fairly likely that the control latches for the state machine are actually working, at least up to a point. It might be they're not latching on properly, so it could be something like that. But I decided to start with this board, and it's fortunate that I did, um, because I have found something wrong with this already. The circuits at the top are the ones that I was interested in to start with, simply because this is effectively where the data is stored for manipulation by the system and that's what seems to not be working when you try to execute a function such as multiplication where the machine has to act on some data that's where it seems to be failing. The, machines, the machine seems to work in other ways you can enter data, retrieve data from uh, RAM for example. 
So I was looking at the circuits in this board and just did a very quick... You can kind of tell straight away if you're familiar with DTL what a particular circuit is likely to be. And these blocks are almost identical to the circuit that I showed in the previous video, which is this. It's not the, exactly the same, but it's um, essentially fulfilling this same role. There are some additional components which are partly aimed at improving the speed of operation, what some of the capacitors are for. Um, but what I was looking at here are uh, the uh, input and output diodes, because um, if I'm getting something out in and out of the latch, then what's inside must be working. If I'm not getting something out, then I can start looking inside the circuit. And I was starting with bit 12, because that's the first bit on the display I was seeing an issue with. So what I was doing is getting the multimeter. I've got it set to diode test mode. Now bear in mind these are germanium transistors and diodes, so you're going to get different uh, voltage drop across them. Um, but even so, I started probing around. And if we look at um, bit 13, for example, if I look at the output and input diodes, you'll see, hopefully you can see, I'm not sure if that's been washed out by the lights. I you can see that. Um, I'm getting good uh, conduction for that diode and if I look at one that's reversed we're not getting any shorts. But if I come down to bit 12 which is this bit and look at the output diode. Now this, is, this should be the right way around. We should be seeing a diode voltage drop here and I'm not. If I look at it the other way around still nothing. So that diode is faulty and that's on bit 12 so it looks like we may have found at least one of the issues. What I'm going to do is put a diode across it. It's open circuit so I can just tack a diode across. I'm going to put a silicon diode across it. Um, germanium diodes are fairly expensive so I don't want to use those until I do the final repair. And in a circuit like this a silicon diode will actually work just fine. So I'm just going to tack a diode across that particular diode and we'll pop it back into the machine and see if it uh, resolves any of the issues. Okay I've just tacked a diode across the one that I think is faulty. I pop this board back into the machine and we'll power it up and see if we've made any progress. I've popped the board back into the machine so we'll power it up. Hopefully we won't get any magic smoke escaping and uh, we should see the display go through its normal reset. Which it does. The system actually actively clears the RAM each time you power it up. Um, you've probably seen some flicker on the camera unfortunately. That's just the camera shutter speed as usual. So we'll see if addition still works. So 3 plus 3 equals 6 clear that and now we'll try uh, multiplication and see if uh, anything's improved so six times that's a good sign this time we are getting some activity when we've pressed the multiplication key so six times nine again that's a good sign it means we're still in the state machine the state machine is still running at this point equals 54 okay that's working so it appears we have resolved a major problem. Let's see if division works. So we'll divide that by 2 if we can. Divide by 2. Again, this is a good sign. It means we're still in the state machine. Equals 27. Okay, two things happened there. One is we got the right answer, so division's working, but also I saw all the digits uh, do something, including the last one, um, which wasn't working before. We weren't able to do anything with the last digit at all, and it's kind of interesting watching this. It's running slow enough so you can see how this works and you can see it works in an almost identical manner to a mechanical calculator. What I'll do now is see if we can actually enter data into all the digits, which we can. If you recall before, this didn't work beyond bit 12. So it looks like bit 12 was just not working in that register. And that's what was causing it to fail because the if you multiply or divide uh, or subtract even, then you start with the last digit. Uh, whereas when you add, you kind of go the other way, which is why addition was working. It was starting at the bottom and working our way up. Had we been able to enter maybe one 
followed by all these zeros, um, then addition probably wouldn't have worked at that point either because it wouldn't have been able to operate on these three digits. But because all the other functions start at the most significant digit and work their way down, that's why um, those functions weren't working. It was getting stuck trying to process this particular bit. So we'll now try putting something into memory and see if we can actually store something. And we can. So it's looking like it's working. Okay, good. Well, it appears that it's working. So we'll try a percentage and see if that works. Okay, so it appears that the system is working. The overflow light doesn't seem to work, but I suspect that's just the bulb. I'll test that off camera. Uh, I'll also be testing the other functions in quite a lot of detail. If I find any other faults, I will, of course, um, get back on camera and I'll do a follow-up video on this. I'll do a follow-up video anyway. We'll put it through its paces uh, once it's been reassembled if I don't find any more faults. So, unfortunately, not quite as exciting a repair as I'd anticipated. Um, but as I said, if even without technical documentation, if you go through a relatively formal process, figure out what's going on, you can normally home in on the um, source of the fault fairly quickly. And doing just a bit of um, logic here to try and deduce what was going on and where the likely culprit might be, um, I was able to kind of zoom in or zoom in on the, the fault very quickly. It's taken me about an hour to repair this, so that's not too bad for what is a fairly complex machine. Okay, if you want me to do any particular uh, tests on this or go over any of its operation in more detail, then please leave a comment. It is a very interesting machine and the uh, circuitry in this is its not unique, but it is fairly unusual. It's um, a shame that more machines like this didn't follow on and uh, become more widespread because they are quite fascinating to work on. Um, a bit of a challenge, but uh, that's kind of the whole point in doing this.